Lesson 7.9, Multiply Mixed Numbers. Mixed numbers are numbers that contain a whole number with a fraction. We can rename a mixed number as a fraction greater than 1 by multiplying the whole number by the denominator, adding the numerator, then using the original denominator. So 2 and 5 fifths is equal to this whole number 2 times the denominator 5. We get a 10. We add the 2 numerator. We get a 12. We write it over that original denominator. We have 12 fifths. There are several methods that we can use to multiply mixed numbers. We can use a model. We can rename the mixed number as a fraction. We can rename the whole number, or we can use the distributive property. So let's see how to do these. Using a model, we have 1 half times 1 and a half. We shade in 1 and a half models, the number of the multiplier, this second factor. We're multiplying it by a half, so we shade in half of the yellow with a second color. We shade in half of this one and half of this one. We shade it in a second color, and the area shaded twice is equal to the product. We learned how to do this in video 7.7 .7 and 7.8, which are linked in the description if you missed them. We know that 1 half times 1 and a half is equal to 3 fourths. We have 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. For renaming the mixed number as a fraction, we have 1 half times 1 and a half. We change this 1 and a half, we rename it to be 3 halves. We multiply the 1 times 2, which is 2. We add the 1 numerator, which is a 3. We put it over that original denominator, we have 3 halves. Now we just multiply the numerator straight across, 1 times 3 is 3, and the denominator straight across, 2 times 2 is 4, it's equal to 3 fourths. And we can rename, if both are mixed numbers, we just multiply the numerators straight across as 5 times 3 equals 15, and the denominators straight across as 4 times 2 equals 8, we have 15 eighths. And 15 eighths is equal to an 8 eighths as a 1 whole, plus a 7 eighths, it's equal to 1 and 7 eighths. We need to make sure our product is written in simplest form, and we know a fraction is in simplest form when 1 is the only common factor for the numerator and denominator. When we see 1 half times 1 and a half, it means half of 1 and a half. This 1 half times means half of. We have 2 times 1 and a half, it means we have 2 of 1 and a half, or 1 and a half 2 times. If we see 3 and 1 fourth times 1 and a half, it means 3 and 1 fourth of 1 and a half. It means 1 and a half 3 and 1 fourth times. And of course, if we see 1 times 1 and a half, it means we have 1 of 1 and a half. So the word of can help us understand. It'll help us understand word problems. If it says half of something, you know it's 1 half times something. If it says three-fourths of something, it means three-fourths times something. We can also use the distributive property. So remember the distributive property is like a mother bird feeding her babies in a parentheses nest. She's on the outside, and each baby bird inside is going to get a turn. So if we have 12 times three and a half, we break the three and a half into a three plus a half, and the 12 is multiplied to each one. It's multiplied to the 3, and then it's multiplied to the half. So we have 12 times 3, which is 36, and 12 times a half, half of 12 is 6, 36 plus 6 is 42. And it was good to choose this method with these factors because it's easy to find 12 times 1 half, or half of 12. Now here we've got the distributive property versus renaming. We're going to do 7 times 1 and 5 eighths. We break apart the 1 and 5 eighths into a 1 plus a 5 eighths. We're going to multiply 7 times 1, and we're going to add it to 7 times 5 eighths. 7 times 1 is 7, and to do 7 times 5 eighths, we can write it over a 1. So we have 7 times 5 over 1 times 8. That's 35 eighths. We need to simplify this, 
and we think how many times can 8 fit into 35? Well, 8 times 4 is 32, so that would be 4 with 3 left over. That would be 4 and 3 eighths. Then we can add the partial products and get 11 and 3 eighths. Now, if we just do renaming, we would have 1 times 8 is 8 plus 5 is 13, so that's 13 eighths. We do 7 times 13 eighths. We can write the 7 over a 1. We get 7 times 13 over 1 times 8. We can do a little multiplication on the side. 13 times 7 is 91. That means we have 91 eighths. Now we think, how many eighths fit into 91? Well, I know 8 times 11 is 88, and there would be 3 left over. So that would be 11 and 3 eighths. So in this case, renaming may be easier. This may be easier, but there's more than one way to solve a problem, and you may find that one way is easier than another. Here we have 3 and 1 sixth times 1 and 2 thirds. We can rename this as 19 6. 3 times 6 is 18, plus one more is 19. We use that denominator, so that's 19 sixths. And 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 more is 5. We use that denominator, so we have 5 thirds. So now we have 19 sixths times 5 thirds. We do 19 times 5. We can do a little multiplication on the side, and we see that's 95. And 6 times 3 is 18, so we have 95 eighteenths. And we can estimate this. We can think of 100 divided by 20. This is close to 100, and that's close to 20. I know 100 divided by 20 is a 5, so I try doing 18 times 5, which is 90. And because we have a 95, that means we have 5 eighteenths left over. It's 5 and 5 eighteenths. Sorry about the focus there. We have 5 whole and 5 eighteenths. Emma's recipe for one batch of sugar cookies needs 1 and 3 fourths cups of flour. If she makes half a batch of sugar cookies, how much flour will she need? So we think she, she will need half of 1 and 3 fourths, or 1 half times 3 fourths. We know 1 half of means 1 half times. 1 half times 1 and 3 fourths, we can write this as a 7 fourths. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Over that denominator, it's 7 fourths. We multiply in the numerator straight across. 1 times 7 is 7. Multiply the denominator straight across. 2 times 4 is 8. She's going to need 7 eighths cup flour if she only makes half a batch of sugar cookies. There is eight and a half ounces of cashews in a can. Bob ate one fourth of the can. How many ounces did Bob eat? We think we need to find one fourth of eight and a half or one fourth times eight and a half. One fourth times eight and a half, we can use the distributive property and break the eight and a half apart into an eight plus a half. We multiply one fourth times eight and one fourth times a half. One fourth times eight is one times eight over four times one. That's eight fourths. One fourth times one half is one times one is one, and four times two is eight. We have eight fourths plus one eighth. And eight fourths is equal to two whole. So that's two and one eighth ounces that he ate. How many ounces are still in the can? We think there were eight and a half ounces, and he ate two and one eighth. We could subtract eight and one half minus two and one eighth. We give them a common denominator of eight. They can both meet at eight, and eight and four eighths is equal to eight and a half. We subtract the numerators. Four minus one is three. We subtract the whole numbers. Eight minus two is six, and we see that there were six and three-eighths ounces left in the can. You want to be very careful when you're multiplying two mixed numbers. It's, sometimes it's easier to just rename them both as an improper fraction, a fraction greater than one. Our next lesson, 7.10, is the last lesson for Chapter 7. 
and we're going to do word problem solving with a strategy called guess, check, and revise. I hope I'll see you there. Have a great day. Bye.